would see if you held up a rock and looked at it through a geologist's hand lens. Uh, this rock, by the way, turned out to be a typical volcanic basalt, very similar to volcanic rocks on Earth. Mm. Okay, so on Sol 43, the 43rd Martian day, it was driving across this plain toward this crater that I showed you a few minutes ago from the orbiter picture called Bonneville Crater. And it turned out that a lot, when it looked at these rocks, they all turned out to be volcanic and probably a lot of these rocks are ejecta from the impact that gouged Bonneville Crater. Okay, so on Sol 67, March 12th, it reached Bonneville Crater and uh, this is a mosaic of several pictures. Now on the other side of the crater is, is part of its heat shield where you, that you can see where it crashed from the orbiter picture. So just as we're littering Earth, we're actually now starting to litter Mars as well. I don't know how the Martians feel about that though. Uh, but you can see here the size of the crater is about two football fields across, a little bit smaller, about a fourth the size of Meteor Crater in Arizona. Now scientists, all the rocks up that they looked at prior to when they got to the crater were all volcanic, which indicates that the, the, the lake deposits that they want to study, what they're really interested in, have been covered over by later volcanic flows and volcanic eruptions. The great hope was that by getting to the crater, this would expose deeper layers of strata that might show evidence of liquid water on Mars. But when they got to the crater, they don't see any interesting layering. It was actually a disappointment because they were hoping to find the lake bed deposits at the bottom of the crater. And just from looking around the rim, they could tell they weren't there. So they didn't want to take any chances of going into the crater risk getting it stuck, so they decided they would just, you know, quickly look in the crater and head toward the Columbia Hills about a mile away. Uh, and I see we have some new people. Do we need, anybody here needs 3D glasses? We're all set. We're all set? If anybody needs some, just let me know. Okay, so then it started to head to the hills. On the way, it stopped a number of to numerous times to look at rocks and soils. Here we see grains inside a sand dune. Uh, and these w shape, size and shape of the grains indicate that winds are very active in the formation of these sand dunes on Mars. Remember, Mar the surface of Mars is basically a giant desert that's even drier than the Sahara Desert. Okay, here we can see the hills in the distance. The Columbia Hills were named after the seven astronauts who perished in the, in the uh, tragedy of the Space sh Shuttle Columbia. So we you see here another rock in the foreground called Mazatzel that also turned out to be volcanic. Every, and that was a disappointment. Everything they looked at on the plains here turned out to be volcanic rocks. Not really what they were hoping to find. <laughs> okay, here we're getting closer to the hills on Sol 87. Uh, there's a ridge here. Uh, of a ridge between Bonneville Crater and Columbia Hills. The biggest boulders here are about seven feet across. They definitely did not want, want to run the rover into one, of these, into one of these boulders. On the way, it photographs, and I'm going to show you a couple more later in the talk, a very, very small impact crater. Now, what's kind of interesting about Mars, remember it has a very thin atmosphere. Only about, the pressure is only about 1% the pressure at sea level on Earth. So on Mars, little small meteors, you know, things maybe the size of a basketball, can make it down and impact the surface and create a little crater. Where on Earth, uh, you know, an impactor of that size is going to burn up in our atmosphere. So Mars has a lot of very small impact craters where on, that never you'd never get something this small on Earth because anything that would create a, cr a crater of this size is going to burn up. Uh, so now we're looking at 130. You really can see here how flat this plane is. And this is a great quote from Jim Bell from his book, uh, which is right now propping up the projector. And I really recommend, Thanks, if you love these pictures, to buy, buy his Mars book. Wow. He said, we've come closer than any other people ever have to being on Mars and experiencing the place as if we were really there. During those first three, or to four, three to four months, several hundred of us lived and breathed Mars and rovers at JPL. What they did is they took the entire team, 
they all were together at JPL and they were living on Mars time. Some people were, wrote, were worked on spirit, others worked on opportunity. So they had a weird life cycle because they were living on Mars time, which as I mentioned is a little bit long, a Mars day is a little bit longer. So over a day or two you wouldn't really notice it that much, but over many days those extra 39 minutes each day start to add up and your life cycle gets very seriously disrupted. And as I'll talk ab about a little bit later, that became a problem, not just for the scientists, but also for their families. Uh, so here we are in mid-June 2004, 153rd day, approaching Husband Hill. Spirit at that point had traveled one and a half miles. They were hoping to get maybe a few hundred yards out of each rover. So by this point, each rover, they were hoping to get maybe three or four months and several hundred yards out of each rover. Already, even by this point, still very early in the mission, Spirit had already significantly exceeded its expectations of its builders and Congress. At this point, the Spirit actually had died right then and there. From a technical point of view, the mission would have been judged a complete success. <laughs> Okay, and here we just see it's getting right to the edge of Columbia, of a husband hill named after Rick Husband, who is the commander of the Columbia. There's a little branch sticking out uh, to the south called West, or to the west, called West Spur. And as it started to climb the hills, that's when things got interesting because they started seeing new types of rocks. And they started finding rocks that show clear evidence of having formed or been altered in liquid water. Uh, one, of these hill, one of these rocks is a very strange rock called uh, a pot of gold. And here we see some rat holes in a rock called woolly patch. And one thing they noticed very early on as they were climbing the hills, the rocks became softer and easier to grind with the rat instrument, which indicated that they had once been soaked in liquid water. Uh, this is a spectacular picture getting uh, close to the top of Westspur. What I really like here is you can see the rim of Gusev Crater about 50 miles away. So this image you can really see pretty far away on Mars because we're climbing higher up. As I mentioned earlier, these rovers really were not designed to be rock climbers, but they're very versatile instruments, and so they were able to make this climb. Pretty amazing. Uh, this is just a cool picture of some soils. As I remember, this picture, I'm not wearing 3D, this one's a pretty cool one in 3D, right? Yeah, I remember some of these microscopic imagers are really neat. Um, so we're getting higher and higher. Uh, this is now we're getting to the flanks of Husband Hill after it's gotten up West Spur. Um, and you can see here there's also some semi-autonomous um, software on the rovers. If they see something that looks really dangerous from the hazard cameras uh, or the navigation camera, they can automatically stop and avoid some potential dangers. And this is another microscopic image of a rock called Wishstone. How big is that circle? This circle is about two inches across, and it's about a tenth of an inch, uh, tenth of an inch deep. So it's, I mean, this is like the 3D here. I think is greatly exaggerated, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but it looks cool, right? Right, right. You go fall into it. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's definitely not a hole you'd fall into. Um, but it looks that way. Yeah. It looked like you know, like almost like there's a hole in the wall here, right? Uh, okay, so now we're getting higher and higher. We're at Sol 347.